All right. Okay. So, uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. And uh, I'm just about to get my slides ready and start sharing. So I'm assuming you can all see my screen now, Ruth. If if you if it's not visible, just let me know. Um, but I'm assuming it's working. So uh, once again, thank you everyone for being here uh, and you know listening about migrating from Drupal. Uh, migration is a topic that's very uh, dear to me because I think uh, my entry into Drupal was from migration. But you know more about that later. So I'm Hussein Abbas. I am an engineering manager at Accelerant. I kind of lead the Drupal development services at Accelerant. You know, uh, I've been here for about seven years now. And uh, during that time, I have also contributed extensively to Drupal. Uh, you know, I, I had the initially had the opportunity as a uh, full time contributor, but then, uh, you know, like you, even when I moved into other roles, I still contribute whenever I find uh, whenever I find time or alignment with other initiatives. I, I go by Hussein Web in most places. Uh, so on Drupal.org, GitHub, and Twitter, that's that's where I'm active most. I, I go by Hussein Web. But yeah, um, other places also, you, you usually find me by this handle. So um, if you have questions, even after the session and everything, I, I think Twitter is one of the best ways to reach me. Uh, and you can do that at Hussein Web. So we'll start by talking about migration. You know, what is migration? And as the word, as the name says, you know, it's, it's you're migrating things from one place to another. And, uh, you know, it, it comes in all different uh, scales and, uh, you know, shapes. There, there is a migration of an entire uh, group, a flock of birds, for example, you know, like that's, the, that's the photo over there. But yeah, in, in terms of, in specific terms of, uh, you know, what we're talking about today, uh, content management systems, we're talking about migrating the relevant content. And uh, what I mean by relevant content is the content that's of your interest, you know, that you want to move into Drupal, right? And uh, this presents an opportunity because you don't have to migrate everything. You know, starting from my first migration, you know, it's, it's always been, uh, you know, a migration of selecting, uh, selecting the content that I would do, want to move over. And that's the key because I now see, I mean, especially with the recent developments of, uh, my, you know, related to migration in Drupal core, I now see migration as more of a business problem. From a technology point of view, it is mostly solved. Uh, you know, we, we have a very powerful migrate framework. Sure, there are complexities associated and a lot of those complexities come with the, you know, Drupal's own complicated field structure, you know, how it represents entities and fields and different types of entities such as, you know, users and taxonomies and um, nodes, uh, paragraphs and stuff like that. So there are complexities related to that and that kind of trickles down into migration. So yeah, of course there are those technical challenges, but then the larger challenge by and large is identifying the content. What is the content that's relevant for you, you know, in, in the migration and uh, another aspect of this, you know, if you're migrating from another system, the, the structure of the content may not be what you want. And again, that's another opportunity. Can you restructure the content while you're migrating? Not as an after fact or not as, as a preparation to the migration, but during migration itself, can you restructure the content? So let's talk more about that. Like I said, we are, today what we're going to talk about is getting content into Drupal from elsewhere. And that elsewhere could be another Drupal site. It could even be another Drupal 8 site. Uh, uh, you, you could use migrate framework, you know, if you're significantly refactoring your site, uh, you know, maybe you're splitting up your site or completely restructuring it to reflect a new business unit or whatever, you know, so you're getting content into Drupal from elsewhere. So one of the things that you would want to do is process content before saving it in Drupal. And now uh, like, let's take a very simplistic example of, you know, upgrading from Drupal six or seven to eight or nine. And you might not explicitly process. I mean, of course, you know, Drupal uh, has changed a lot with Drupal eight, right? You know, Drupal seven and eight are vastly different. So internally it would still process a lot of things, but you know, from a, from, from a user point of view, from your point of view, it, you may not really see any processing, but uh, on the other hand, you might want to restructure the content like we already discussed. 
So you would want to process content before saving it in Drupal. And it can be elaborate, it can be complex, it could be very, very simple, you know, it could just be something like, you know, moving from one type of field to another, you know, like, like for example, we do have, we now have telephone field in code. So earlier you might be saving it in a text field, a telephone content, you could be saving it in a text field. And now you want to move it to a telephone field. So it could be as simple as that, or it could be as complex as breaking up a body field into paragraphs, for example, you know, that's a very whole, very complicated area to get into, but yeah, it could be as simple or as complex as you like. And this is what we call the extract transform load, you know, which otherwise, you know, ETL for short, you know, this is the, uh, this is the vocabulary used in enterprise systems. Typically, uh, you know, you would have ETL systems and that's what Drupal uh, migration basically is. It is a process of extracting content from the source. Uh, oops. Yeah. Transforming content, you know, whatever you want to, uh, whatever processing you want to, uh, do on that content and then load load uh, refers to saving it in Drupal. Okay. And uh, like I said, this has been largely technologically, it has been solved in Drupal, you know, due to this migrate framework. Excellent. This is one of the things that I really like about uh, Drupal, you know, uh, because like I said, since I started working with Drupal about 10 years back, I have been working on migration in different ways. So uh, my first site, in fact, was uh, uh, a migration from a bespoke PHP CMS into Drupal 6. And uh, there was no, uh, I didn't really use the migrate framework at that. I think it was very, very new at that time. And I was new to Drupal, so I didn't go with that. I, I wrote my own scripts. But since then, I have been working with this migrate uh, framework and it's, it's excellent. It has evolved and it looks very different in Drupal 8, like we'll see. So. One of the key, one of the cornerstones of uh, working with migrate framework is declarative programming. And, uh, you know, essentially over here, you would describe what you want to do, not how to do it. Like the name says, you know, that it's in contrast with imperative programming, which we are more used to, you know, like if you're writing a module PHP, you know, a Drupal module written in PHP, you're telling the computer how to do certain stuff. Uh, you know, you, 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 for example, you're saying dollar X is equal to zero and then dollar X plus is equal to hundred. You know, you're saying, okay, create a variable called dollar X and then add hundred to it or whatever, you know, you're, you're telling exactly how you want to do a certain thing. Uh, declarative programming on other end, you're representing what you want. Uh, you're representing, you're representing the final state of your system. And, and that's, useful, that's very important to understand. Um, let, let's look at some of the examples, you know, uh, if I'm not sure if you have, uh, uh, if you've worked with any of the systems, Ansible or Terraform, uh, these are the two that I know of, I'm sure there are others. And um, these two, again, they are very popular for the fact that you don't tell how to do stuff. So Ansible is used for provisioning uh, servers. Terraform is also used for provisioning a service. Uh, Ansible is used for configuring. I think that's the more correct word. But anyway, that's not important. So you're telling Terraform or you're telling Ansible that at the end of whatever you do, you, you know, it's up to you how you do it. But at the end of whatever you do, this is what I want. And so you represent that, you know, Ansible, uh, you would use YAML. You, you, would, you would write a file, uh, you know, using YAML. And you would say that, okay, you know, this is what I want, you know, at the end of the at the end of whatever you do, like this is what the state of the system should be, you know, a particular module or particular package. Terraform also same thing, you use another language, uh, HCL, and you tell exactly that, okay, at the end of whatever you do, I want my infrastructure to look like this. And that's migrate framework as well. Um, you would tell that at the end of whatever the migrate framework does, this is the this is the mapping that I want to see. So, in Drupal seven, we would define these mappings uh, using PHP code. So, uh, yeah, it is you know we are writing it using PHP, but it essentially was telling the migrate uh, framework that, see, you know, I, I I know you're going to migrate this, but this is how you're going to migrate. You're going to, um, for example, if you um, let me let me, yeah, so. 
if I want to migrate a field called contact, you know, so I'm saying that, okay, source field, uh, it, it's being clipped over here, but it's contact and destination is field contact. That's in the, uh, uh, sorry, that's in the uh, Drupal system, you know, the destination field. So all of these over here, you know, th there are different mappings. Um, and we're telling Drupal that, uh, you know, these are the mappings that I care about and how you migrate it, that's up to you. But this is what I want to see at the end. Uh, in Drupal 8 or 9, we have kind of changed, you know, because uh, we wrote mappings earlier with PHP and um, we found that okay, you know, it's simple enough to write it using YAML. And that's what we did, you know, in Drupal 8, we moved a lot of things over to YAML. So this was one of those things. And uh, now we can more concisely represent the mappings that we want, right? And we can say that, okay, you know, uh, that this is the source. So like in this example, I'm, I'm migrating from a, w, a WordPress source. Um, um, it's, it's a different module, uh, you know, um, this, this, so, I mean, this source plugin is made available through a different module. Uh, and, uh, we'll talk about, we'll talk about plugins in a minute. And then we are saying that, okay, from this source, you would find fields like user login and user email and all of that. And I would want you to assign them to name, uh, name or mail or created and so on. And, uh, we do have a very flexible system. Like I said earlier, this transformation could be as complex as you want. Right. And, you know, that's where we can get into a little bit more, uh, complicated, uh, uh, mappings. And again, we'll, we'll see more of this later. And then finally, we are saying that, okay, the destination, you know, where do we want to load this content or save this content? And that's, you know, over here, we are saying that, okay, we want to save it as an entity user. And, and then there is some other metadata, like, uh, you know, the ID, the label, and, uh, we know the, you could have more uh, things like derivers and all of that, but that's, I, I think beyond, beyond the scope of this uh, session right now, but we'll, we'll look at this, you know, we'll come across all of these things in a minute. So I mentioned plugins a few times already, right. And, uh, you know, um, Drupal 8, that's another thing that came out of uh, Drupal 8, you know, a lot of things moved over to plugins, uh, which is a very nice addition, you know, uh, uh, a way of thinking of how do we represent different things inside a Drupal system. So like, for example, blocks are plugins, you know, and uh, views are plugins and so on. So uh, migration, similarly, they're plugins and there are different plugin types that the migration system gives us, you know. Um, so we have a source as a plugin, uh, a source as a different plugin type. So, you know, what this means is that you can have different plugins that fulfill the source plugin type. You know? And in core, you do have some uh, default sources. You have a source called SQL data source, you know, which works with any SQL uh, database or MySQL variant database, right? And uh, then destination plugins. Now destination, um, that's Drupal, of course, right? Uh, so most of the destination plugins you likely use are in Drupal core. You might have an occasional contrib module that gives you a different destination plugin. It's, it's possible. Like none of like, you know, I'm not really getting a good example right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, if, if, if there is like a unique destination, you know, if a module is providing a unique, like, you know, thing, which is not entity because in all entity types are covered by Drupal core. So uh, something which is not an entity and I'm not getting a good example right now. So you would a module can also provide a contrib module can also provide its destination type, but otherwise most of them are already covered inside Drupal and process that's now you have a lot of plugins over here and uh, they can, they are, they range from like the simplest one, which is, uh, you know, get. So, you know, in the earlier example, when we saw that uh, this thing like name uh, map to user login, um, that's, that's implied, you know, there is a plugin called get. And that's implied over here. You know, we don't need, need to say that, okay, plugin get, but internally Drupal still uses that plugin. You know, if you say name uh, map to user login or mail map to user email, this is the plugin that's used, or you can specify the plugin you want. Uh, in this case, for example, I'm using a plugin called default value, and then I'm specifying the uh, input to that plugin, you know, default value of one, which means that uh, what this plugin does is always returns one, right? So always returns the default value in this case one. So uh, there are many plugins, uh, you know, like we'll see. So, uh, and migration itself is a plugin type. And this lets us do some cool things again, you know, uh, like there are some complicated migrations, uh, you know, like we'll see, like for example, uh, Drupal uh, seven to eight upgrade, 
that's uh, that that's implemented uh, using this migration framework as a whole. I'm sure that's not new to you, but yeah, uh, this is largely made possible because of uh, migration itself being a plugin type. You know, uh, because this allows us to have dynamic migrations. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not like a uh, like this is a very very simple static migration what you're seeing on screen right now but uh, for something like an upgrade you need to be able to dynamically cater to different content types and fields and everything and that's where we get uh, into migration being a plugin type but again this is just fii we'll probably not cover more of this over here but, but it's important to know that okay all of these are plugin types so uh, let's let's look at the different parts of migration we we've already covered over it you know we have the source process and destination uh, this is a different example and now the process can be a a, a process largely con consists of mappings from um, you know from a source uh, from a destination sorry from a source to a destination and um, optionally specifying a specific plugin so for example like we discussed default value lets you pick uh, you know like let's you set a default value and these destinations uh, the destination field names they are mostly defined by the destination plugin so uh, the source field names come from the source plugin so wp term this is a, this is a plugin called uh, uh, wp term and um, it, you know whatever module is defining it it would define all the source fields Right, and the destination fields are defined by the destination plugin. So these are typically the fields in your Drupal, uh, in your Drupal system. So um, VID is an internal; it's it's a base field. Uh, name again is a base field. Description, in case of taxonomy terms, it's a base field. So, uh, and like we saw earlier, you know, you all you can actually we didn't, yeah. But in this case, we saw that you know you can have other fields. You know, the fields that you create manually, those also could be a destination field, and that's uh, made possible. Because of the destination plugin, so we discussed over here. Let's just go through. You know, source plugins allow you to read content from a source. So now this source could be SQL sources, like we discussed. Uh, you know, but then then there are contrib modules that provide source plugins to read from a CSV or XML, a JSON API, for example, and uh, they, they make it largely very easy for someone implementing the migration. You just need to write a source plugin once, and uh, once you do that, you can implement as many migrations as you want from that particular source. So, um, common formats like CSV, XML, you know, there are contrib modules that give those uh, source plugins. And um, again, there are contrib modules that provide source plugins from WordPress, for example. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the plugins that I've been showing as an example so far. That's from a, a WordPress migration module. Uh, and they could be others. And lastly, Drupal upgrade itself provides sources from for Drupal six and seven entities, and now this is part of the core. But there is an additional module you need to enable to get these sources: Drupal six and seven entities. And that's the Drupal upgrade module, and um, we'll look at that. Now, destination plugins allows you to write content to Drupal. It could be entities most used. Of course, it's entities because in Drupal, pretty much everything is an entity right now. So you know, um, entity node, entity user. These are probably the most used ones but then you could write to config entity if you want to um, it gets tricky over here so really no one does that except the drupal upgrade you know so upgrade migrates uh, drupal upgrade migrates both the configuration and the content so um, that flexibility is possible but uh, in custom migrations uh, i don't think many people do that you know for example i have never done that i would rather Build the configuration, and you know that's the common thing that we do. You know, build the my build the site that we want to, and write the migrations. Or even if you're upgrading, you know, uh, we'll run the migrate in configure only mode, which I'll demo hopefully, you know, um, at, at the shortly. So, uh, and yeah, of course, country models may define additional destination. You know, so um, like I said, I don't really have a good example for this, but yeah, it's very possible. And process plugins. Uh, so we already looked at uh, you know the default get process plugin, but then you have others uh, like uh, migration lookup, for example, that lets you link different migrations. You know dependent migrations. So for example, you're migrating users, and you're also migrating their posts, uh, articles, or something, and you want to keep that mapping right. You know so when when you're migrating the article. Uh, 
so you have already migrated the users and it's very likely that the IDs have changed. The ID in the source system and in the destination is different. So you want to map them, you know, so when you're migrating the article, even the user ID should be mapped. So a plugin called migration lookup lets you do this. Uh, similarly, you know, uh, the terms and categories as in the taxonomy terms in Drupal, again, you want those IDs to be mapped. So migration lookup lets you do that. And your plugins can also, uh, sorry, your uh, contrib models or custom models can also different plugins. So we see one example over here, uh, strip ET tags, that's from a uh, contrib module, or I think it's a custom model. This is from a contrib module, WP content. Uh, again, from that WordPress model that I referred to earlier. So uh, now, and, and like we see over here, the process plugins can be pipelined as well. You know, so um, you can have it as very simple, like title map to post title, but you can have it a little bit more complicated. So we see in this example, body slash value. It first picks up the source from post content, passes it through the plugin strip ET tags, and then passes it through the plugin WP content. It, it does whatever, you know, it, it's up to you what plugins you want to apply. You know, in this case, I needed to apply these two plugins. I needed to clean up some tags in the content and then uh, then do a generic WordPress cleanup. So like WordPress by default formats post in a certain way, you know, it does not, uh, it removes those P tags, you know, and in Drupal, you need the P tag. So this plugin kind of makes it uh, uh, consistent for Drupal. So um, the point is that it's up to you, you know, how you want to process the source. And this structure, this YAML structure is quite powerful in letting you specify that. And you know whatever it doesn't, or when it when this gets too wieldy, you of course you know you can write a plugin to kind of shortcut all of these things. You know, like for example, I could write a plugin to do both of these in one go, and just specify that. So um, some of the examples of uh, process plugins, you know, we we saw uh, I think two or, uh, two or three so far, uh, but then you have things like callback, which lets you run a callback, uh, you know, like a PHP callback before uh, on the value. So you, for like you know, for example, trim if you want to trim the spaces or something else, you know, like uh, uppercase or lowercase. Concat would let you concatenate two different values into a single thing. Default value we already saw. Explode lets you split up the value. Uh, you know, like just like the PHP function explode. Extract lets you uh, select one particular entry. So a use case might be that you are uh, migrating a list of items, but you just want one particular, you want to see one particular item from there. So extract uh, and so on, flatten, uh, migration lookup, we discussed that. Uh, skip on empty, skip row of, if, like, you know, these, these plugins let you skip a row, you know, so if there is a certain condition, you know, you, you want to, uh, skip certain rows, um, you can use these uh, functions, right? And now these are part of core. Now migrate plus it's it's a contrib module that gives you a little bit more, uh, you know, some more plugins like these process plugins. Uh, so you have things, uh, things like, you know, array pop, shift, entity lookup, uh, skip on value. So, you know, if you like a more conditional skip, uh, you know, all of these, uh, and again, migrate plus would have this documentation to, you know, like depending on your needs, you would use one of these plugins. So like I've been saying, Drupal upgrades, they are implemented as a migration uh, internally, you know, um, like normally you would just have like an in-place upgrade. Um, like we, you, like, like we saw with Drupal 8 to 9, it's an in-place upgrade, you know, like how you would upgrade from 6 to 7. In fact, 8 to 9 is even simpler. It's, it's not even that complicated as 6 to 7. But seven to eight was a significant shift and um, we couldn't upgrade everything, uh, you know, like in place. So that's why we have this implemented as migration. So what this lets us do is have two different ways to run these upgrades. One is migrate everything. You know, uh, this is the kind of upgrade that people usually think, you know, that, that that's what usually people think about. Personally, I don't do this as much, you know, I mean, I would like to rebuild the site uh, whenever possible, but if I'm just wanting to do an upgrade, yeah, I would just use the migrate upgrade module to, um, to, to just migrate everything, you know, config, so config refers to the content types and stuff like that. Content types, taxonomy terms, menus, everything. So all of that also gets migrated and then the content of course, or like I said, what I prefer more of is rebuild the site and then migrate the content. So, uh, some of the tips, you know, before I go into the uh, into the walkthrough, 
is that I would run Drupal upgrade on a clean site. It's it's not impossible to run on a site which is already there, but uh, Drupal upgrade especially, uh, you know, because the way it handles certain mappings, I would run it on a, a clean site. And uh, before you run the migrations, you need to enable the modules. Otherwise, those migrations don't kick in. As in, for example, if you're trying to migrate paragraphs, you have to make sure that the paragraphs module is enabled. And uh, now this issue is largely solved, but it does happen quite often. So look into the issue queues if you don't see a particular modules migration. You know, uh, the core fields, of course, they are they have migration paths, but some may not. And uh, what I prefer, like I said, even if it's a moderately complex site, just consider building the site again and use Drupal upgrade to migrate the content. So let's look at what that might look like very quickly. Uh, you know, so in interest of time, I, uh, you know, I already run this uh, migration just now. Uh, so one of the things is, you know, in screen share, uh, things get very slow. So um, that's one of the reasons I've just run this migration in advance, but I'm going to walk you through all the steps and, you know, like, uh, since I've already run, just run this, you can see the output. So this is a Drupal 7 site that uh, I have just uh, installed and, you know, used devil generate to generate like 50 random nodes, like you can see, uh, you know, it, it's also generated some images and everything. Right. And uh, this is the Drupal 9 site, which was, um, very, uh, I'm like, it was, uh, <coughs> it was also new, but then um, I, I just ran over the migration on top of it. Right. And um, to run this migration. So like I said, you know, I, I do this in two different steps. So one of the first step was, uh, so this is, in, uh, so just like a quick context, uh, you know, setting the context over here. Uh, this, both this, both of these sites are part of the same Lando site, you know, if not familiar with Lando, that's okay. It, it's just a way of running, you know, you might be familiar with uh, VAMP or uh, Acquia desktop or, uh, you know, Vagrant or, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, so this is a similar way of running sites in, uh, but using Docker and, and I'm running both of the sites in the same, um, what's the word, like in the same Docker compost setup, uh, you know, the idea is that from the Drupal 9 site, I'll be able to access the Drupal 8 database. And that's one of the important things, you know, you need uh, for the migration or the upgrade, at least you need the access to source. Right. And uh, so that's one of the reasons I put it in the same, uh, same Lando setup where you have this, uh, like the D7 site. Okay. And um, the database associated with that. And then the Drupal 9 site, you know, which is uh, like, like a regular Drupal 9 site. And, um, in the settings.php of this site, again, like don't ignore, like you, know, you can ignore the Lando specific bits, but you might recognize this as the default database uh, configuration for Drupal. You know, um, like normally, of course, you would have like the database name itself over here, but, but since I'm using Lando, I can configure it this way. But I'm also configuring two other databases. Uh, you know, so like I'm seeing D7 simple and D7 com like I, I was actually like planning to demo it with two different Drupal 7 sites, but <laughs> I, I don't think it's possible now. So um, I have these keys uh, databases configured and uh, you know, uh, they, they point to different databases and everything. But the point is now the Drupal 9 site can access the Drupal 7 database, right? So that's the first thing you need. Uh, so when I'm, um, <clears throat> oh uh, yeah, also let's look at the modules first. So, like I said, you need to enable the migrate module, but uh, if you want to upgrade, you also need to enable some of the additional modules like uh, uh, migrate upgrade, uh, Drupal upgrade and all of that. So let's look at that. And um, that's weird. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, okay. All right, oh, uh, okay, I know what that is. That's the, that's the product of migration. Okay, so these are the modules that's uh, available. So you have uh, migrate, that's like the core migration module uh, that, that I mentioned, you know, and then you have migrate Drupal and migrate Drupal UI. So migrate Drupal contains migration, uh, you know, migration specific to uh, like source plugins and everything specific to Drupal, Drupal 6 and 7, right? And UI provides a user interface on top of that. So, you know, I could uh, do this, for example, I, I could, um, Oops, oops, oops. 
yeah, I, I can go to the site that I've installed after enabling the module, I can go to upgrade slash upgrade and it, it can, I can walk through this pages and, you know, it will, I can click continue and it would, it would do it, it would do the migration. And if your interest is only upgrading, that's fine. Right. But then I install this module migrate tools, uh, which lets me, which gives brush integration. Right. And migrate plus, like I said, it, it gives certain enhancements to core migration. You know, we discussed like it, it adds some of the process plugins, but also handles few other things. Okay. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this is the model for brush upgrade, uh, sorry, Drupal upgrade and brush support for direct upgrades and migrate tools gives other commands for um, brush. So we can see that. Uh, if you just run this, I mean, this is actually an, it'll generate an error, but it'll also tell what commands are available. So these are the different migrate commands we have. You know, you can just look at the status or import rollback. So all of this is possible because of how migrate structure, migrate is implemented. You can import specific migrations. You can, you can selectively say that, okay, import only these many rows. You can specify the source IDs that import only a, um, specific IDs from the source. Right. Or roll back that, you know, you want to roll back a migration. So uh, various things and migrate upgrade. Uh, like I said, uh, that's it'll, it'll run the Drupal upgrade. So we'll just look at that. Uh, the command for that. Uh, let me just, uh, yeah. I, I hope this is large enough. Oops. Yeah. So this is the command. Right. Uh, so I've already run this command, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll not run it again, but let's look at the paths. So I specify the DB database key. So this is something that I've already defined in settings.php, like, uh, like I showed earlier, you know, D7 complex, that's the database key. And I'm also specifying the legacy route. And this is the URL to the site, the base URL. And this is used for uh, downloading images, for example. So if you don't specify this, it can't get images. Right, because it has to download the like the database will contain the path to the image, but where does it download for from? You know, like the entire the full URL. You need this legacy route for that, and I'm adding a specific um, flag over here, configure only. So, if I don't add this flag, it's fine. It'll it'll do the same thing as the UI would have. You know, it would have migrated the entire thing. You know, from Drupal seven to eight, but I, if I give this. Uh, configure only what it does is it'll, it'll not run those migrations. It'll just create those migrations as config entities. And, uh, you know, what, uh, so if I, if I run this, <coughs> like I said, this takes time. So what would happen at the end of this is the config entities get created, which I can export using drush config export. Um, and, uh, I, I would then be able to see each of these migrations. So I've already, like I said, I've already run this. So um, let's look at one of the simple migrations. So D7 node, let's see that. So node complete article, you know, so it, it has created a migration for migrating article content type, right? And, uh, you know, you can already see that, uh, uh, you know, from based on our examples before that, you know, it looks very similar. Uh, UUID is there because of, you know, because now it's a config entity. So you can ignore this UUID, lang code, status, uh, dependencies, not, not relevant to migration. So if you're writing a migration yourself, not relevant. Um, ID is, of course, you know, you can specify the ID class. So like I said, migration is a plugin itself. You no, know, so this lets you select the, you can override the class that migrate uses. Again, let's not go too deep into this. Uh, you can specify something called migration tags. And this lets you, and migration group, these two let you selectively run migrations. So you can specify while well, running migration, you can say that, okay, I want to run migrations of these particular types only, right? And migration group is like, you know, a group of migrations and uh, we can take a look at that um, over here. So migrations also, there is a UI for managing all the migrations. So, you know, this is the, you can see the different groups over here. Now default is always there. You know, it's a container for any migrations, not explicitly assigned to a group, uh, you know, but all our migrations, uh, you know, which we generated using this configure only, they are, uh, they are put into this group. So let's list them. 
Yeah. So we see all of these migrations over here, you know, the different, um, you know, like you can see most of them are for config. So it, it migrates things like blocks and uh, field configuration and comment field configuration comments and a lot of things, you know, like performance configuration, filter settings, cron settings. So a lot of configuration related things. And then the content itself, you know, node, uh, you know, the node uh, article nodes and basic page nodes and everything. And it gives you a summary that, okay, you know, there are 29 present in source, 29 are migrated, zero are remaining. So like I said, I've already run the migration. So it's zero left. So now I can execute migrations from here. You know, I can select one of them and say that, okay, I just want this particular migration. And I say execute. And uh, migrations do have dependencies. So for example, if I want to run article migration, I also need fields at first. So it, it will handle that. It will either tell you that, you know, you have to run the dependencies first or in case of brush, you can, uh, there, is a, there is a field that does that. So uh, migrate import. Um, I just want the help now. I don't seem to have that in history, but yeah, I can run migrate import import dash dash all. It will run all the migrations, or I can specify like specific IDs. Uh, you know, I, I can specify a limit. I can say that okay, migrate like run only migrations having a tag. So for example, uh, you can write a migration for fields. You know, and um, you you can tag it that way. That's up to you. You know, tags and groups. It's up to you. What do you call it? And um, yeah, execute dependencies. So you can also specify that if I want, like if you if you specify that, okay, migrate, um, uh, sorry, migrate the node content type, right? And it needs some of the migrations before that, you know, maybe an image migration because article, um, article nodes uh, have an image, right? And images also need to be migrated first. So there are dependencies and you can specify that. And um, yeah, that's uh, like I said, you know, at the end of it, you would have a, a site, you know, like the time does not really allow me to go through like a detailed walkthrough because like I said, um, it takes time to run this, especially when I'm sharing my screen. But yeah, at the end of it, you would have all the content that's available in your source site. This is the source site, uh, you know, the Drupal 7 version. So you can see all of these and you see the same content over here, the same images, right? And configuration also has uh, been migrated. So for example, the name has become site install, you know, uh, and uh, we, we saw this, you know, an extra search box, which was kind of weird, you know, kind of threw me off earlier. Um, that also, that's also a part of migration, actually a block got migrated in this region. So yeah, uh, Drupal upgrade, it, it's a walkthrough and yeah, just one last thing before I close the demo. Uh, so we, we see this, you know, it has generated this migrations, uh, you know, we ran configure only. And after that we run config export, we would get all of these migrations. Now it's up to you. How do you want to reconfigure these migrations? You could, if you, if you're restructuring the site, let's say you're renaming article to something else, you can say that, okay, you know, uh, you, you can export these migrations and at the end of it, uh, change the destination that, okay, you know, like instead of article, you have blog posts, maybe, I, I don't know. So you can change that. Uh, you can change the field names if you want to, right? So this is a shortcut, uh, you know, where you let Drupal upgrade, generate these migrations, but don't, not run them directly. Just pick the migrations that you need, adjust them and put them in your custom module, you know, uh, and um, uh, you would typically, the way you would do this is, you know, in custom module, you would have a directory called, uh, uh, migration templates or recently just migrations and Drupal picks it up, you know, next time when you run, uh, migrate, uh, status, or I think, um, info, I think status, it will just list all the migrations that's available, including the one from your uh, custom module. So, uh, this is very similar to the screen we saw in UI. So yeah, as soon as you define this migration, copy over the YAML file into your custom module, uh, you would, uh, you would be able to see that in the UI. So, Thank you, Hussein. That's really cool. Thank you. Uh, um, I'll close on a few tips on uh, writing migrations uh, and uh, then open up for questions. So we've, we've got about 30 seconds. We, we do only. Okay. Then I think, uh, <laughs> I think I better stop now. <laughs>
I don't need five minutes. Maybe I'm <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for that talk. Um, so, so uh, have you done many, many uh, migrations yourself? Then it sounds like yeah, you've like got I said, quite a lot of experience. About, yeah, since about ten years, ten years of usage. Cool. Most of it is with migrations. Yeah. Cool. Different types, and you know, upgrade is like one of the simplest types, but yeah, different types. So we've got a, a question from uh, Nisith, I think, uh, Biswa, um, which was, uh, does Migrate use Q or Batch or something else? Well, uh, yeah, so it depends on how you run the migration. And yeah, by default, it uses Batch. So okay. uh, yeah, if you're running it from UI, it'll create a Batch. But otherwise, if you're running it through Drush, Drush it handles the the process itself, you know, so it, it does not really create a batch as in the Drupal batch. It does not create that. Okay. But yeah, UI, if you're running it from UI, it will create a batch process. Cool. And Jeffrey Roberts is asking uh, for modules that don't have a migration path available, what sort of plugins will you need to write? Okay, so the best way to do this, and this I did this a lot in the early uh, years, uh, you know, is that you for the contrib module, for that specific contrib module, contribute a patch which would uh, add in those plugins. So now I don't have anything that I can open in like next 30 seconds, but uh, you know, I, I can give, I can just quote examples. So for example, address field, that's a complicated field, right? It's not, it's not like a very, very simple value to value field. Um, it has a lot of different subfields, right? And um, um, to add migration support, we would go in and, um, add in this particular plugin, this uh, process plugin or destination plugin, depending on what we need to do. And we add it to the module and we submit it as a patch. And, you know, I think then you follow the regular Drupal patch workflow where you would, uh, where you would, you know, while installing either in a composer JSON file, you would specify the patch and you would get a site with the patch available. Uh, and uh, yeah, then you'll be able to run uh, the plugins I'm sorry, it, it might be a while for me to actually try to find that. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, um, we've got Ricardo asking, uh, are multilingual migrations easy? Well, they are not that hard anymore. Uh, if you're writing your own custom migration, you can definitely handle that using uh, a field called lang code. Uh, so, you know, there is this mapping lang code. So you can use that, you know, depending on what your source is. You can set the lang code in that specific way, you know. So yeah, you you just have to make sure that you're setting it on the same ID, you know. So if if in your source the multiple languages they are uh, represented using different IDs, uh, then like for example, it, it happened in Drupal seven. There were uh, you know there were two different models of translation in Drupal seven, and one of them had this TN ID, like a very different, you know, where each no each translation would become a different node essentially. Right, and then you would have a field called TNID to distinguish them. So that's why you know you see this the default migration generated by Drupal that uses TNID, right? And then you set the lang code. So yeah, this is how you would handle it. You know, make sure that they get saved to the same ID, and you set the lang code correctly. Then okay. ultimately, it depends on what your source is. That's great. Uh, so Tanya is asking, uh, how do you deal with elements that can't be migrated? Uh, my great messages don't help in understanding why. At least that's what they're saying. Okay, um, it's a little difficult for me to answer without an example because yeah, yeah uh, my great messages. I agree that you know sometimes the error is vague, and then you have to like dig into that specific ID. What I can suggest is you know uh, keep an eye on that migrate messages table, and you know you would get an ID, the source ID. And then you can run migrate import, you know, like for example, using Drush, run the migrate import with that particular ID and then attach it to something like an X debug, you know, like debugger or something. And that's that's how I would debug things, you know. But yeah. then to answer this better, I would actually need an example. Okay. Well, I think we need to wrap up now. Uh, we're just about to be thrown away. So um, thank you very much for, uh, for your talk, Zane, and um, have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, last note, if you want to talk more about this, Hussein Web on Twitter, that's the best way to reach me. That's great. And sorry to all those that we didn't get to answer the questions. There were some good ones at the end, but uh, sadly time. Take care, all. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here.